Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Can you hear me okay out there? I can't hear me there. I can hear me a little bit better that way. God, it sounds a little louder that way. Well, welcome to Worship with St. John's. Special welcome to guests who are here with us on this day. We've come for this time of worship to express our love for God and to be filled with God's love, the love that makes life worth living. And coming for worship helps us to be the church all week long. It's week five in our Easter season. We're still celebrating the resurrection with stories of the early church and our theme, Planting the Seed, celebrating how that seed of faith was planted in the days after Jesus' resurrection and how it grew and grew as the Holy Spirit worked through God's people to change the world for good. In our scripture reading today, we're going to hear about the importance and power of God's love in our lives, how love is patient, love is kind, and love never ends. We'll celebrate Holy Communion together this morning. At that time, you can remember your baptism in the font if you'd like, and open your hand to receive uh, the bread. We also have gluten-free bread available and the cup of wine or juice before continuing to your seat. An empty bowl at the end of the front row is for your empty cup. All are welcome to participate in that holy meal. If you would rather, come forward and cross your arms to receive a blessing. We'll have a prayer leader available in the gathering area during Holy Communion if you'd like to pray with someone one-on-one -on -one at that time. I invite you to rise as we give thanks for baptism. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give, give you, you thanks, thanks, O God, God for in, in the beginning, beginning your spirit moved over, over the waters, and, and by your word you created the world, calling, calling forth life in which you took delight. delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through, through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word. You claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise, praise you for, for the, the gift, gift of water, water that, that sustains, sustains life. And, and above all, we praise, praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Christ. Shower us, us with your spirit and renew our, our lives with your forgiveness, forgiveness grace, and love. love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing, gather us in. Give 
us to drink the wine and compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in your own. Gather us in, all people together, fire of love in our flesh and our bones. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God gives us the gift of Holy Scripture. Plant seeds, seeds of faith, faith in, in us, O oh God. God gives us the gift of the Holy Sacraments. Plant, Plant seeds, seeds of hope in us, O oh God. God gives us the gift of holy community. Plant, Plant seeds, seeds of love in us, O oh God. Let us join together in prayer. Loving Lord, you, you have showered your world with faith, faith hope, and, and love. Help us to be faithful to you, to offer hope to those in need, and to love all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Twenty-four young people are confirming their faith this spring. We have the privilege of hearing their stories of faith. And we'll hear from two this morning. First one, Eleanor Polk. I see God in many ways in my life. I see God when I need to be brave. I see God through singing when I am nervous to go on stage. I see God when I have to sing a solo. I see God when I am performing in the play. When I need to be brave, I take a breath and burrow through it. When, when I'm away from my family, I feel God's presence helping me to be brave. When I'm on stage, God is with me. God gives me all the strength I need. I see God through my community when I interact with other people. I see God in confirmation, especially in small group time when my peers and I understand each other. I see God in all the kids at Faith Corps and Soul Troop, specifically when the volunteers and kids help each other. And as far as my community goes, they're amazing. From three-year-olds to 93-year-olds, we all help one another through various ways. I see God when I travel. At Bible camp and Holden Village, I see God at worship and through experiencing nature. Riverside Bible Camp, Holden Village, and Lutherdale Bible Camp have all helped me to grow in my faith and see more amazing, amazing ways that people care for each other. Psalm 25 verse one says, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul I picked this verse as my confirmation verse because I love to sing and it's from one of the songs we often sing. But there is another reason I picked it. Lifting up my soul to God means that I am putting my full trust in God. And that is how I want to live my life. Thank you. And Alden Stokel to come share with us. Come on up, Alden. Dear God, people ask me where I see you in my world and my faith journey. The thing is, I see you everywhere I go, even when unrest, hate, and violence reign. 
I see you in the aid workers and volunteer doctors working tirelessly to repair and heal the victims of conflicts all around the world. I see you in the world hunger organizations trying constantly to feed the malnourished everywhere. I can thank you though for your love through my friends and because I know I can be whoever I want to be and know that they and you have my back. I saw you when I made my first communion chalice and felt truly special. I saw you when I went to Luderdale, met new friends, and learned more about, me, about you and Jesus. So if you're still asking where I see you in my life, I see you everywhere. With love, Alden. <laughs> sharing of where we see God in our life. Very well done. How many of you like an Oreo cookie? Oh my goodness. Uh, what do you like about the Oreo cookie? What's the best part of it? <laughs> Somebody last night said a cup of a glass of milk, <laughs> which is true as well. Uh, a text that we have for today is uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And for you mathematicians here, Paul placed 1 Corinthians 13 in between 12 and 14. <laughs> now, you could move from chapter 12 to chapter 14 and not miss a beat. Why did he put 13 in between 12 and 14? We'll hear more about that this morning. The church at Corinth, the seeds that were planted, were struggling in their growth. They were struggling in their growth. Uh, all sorts of issues came up. All sorts of things were happening. And St. Paul shared with them a way in which they could be the seeds that would grow despite the fact that there were difficulties surrounding them. I invite our assistant to come forward as we share 1 Corinthians 13 in your pew Bible. It's on page 934, 934. So we hear these words from Paul addressed not to just Corinthians, but addressed to us. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, who is the Christ. Amen. Well, in order to capture the cream that is in between chapters 12 and 14 that Paul is talking about, we need to take a look at the church of that first century. That first century had a church that was planted, and it was rough going in many respects because not unlike the church of the 21st century that we're a part of, there were all sorts of differences that were happening within their midst. And as Pastor Matt shared last week, the church of Corinth was a church that was divided, divided over many issues, many things following many different people, And it doesn't say that the whole church was doing this, but the majority of the church was, so that Paul indicated that he needed to do or to say something to give them hope. In order to understand this, let's take a look at what did make up that church in the first century. The first century church was made up of people that were different in so many different ways different styles of living, different walks in life. They were made up of all sorts of different ethnicities. They were made up of different races, of different genders, of different things that they found important for them within their life. In this church, there were slave and there were free people. There were individuals who were poor, and these poor people were sitting alongside of rich people. In fact is, in that early church, there was the uh, individuals that were the treasurer of the city of Corinth, was sitting alongside of a poor person. And it is said that in their company, the church at Corinth could claim a person that could by himself, with his wealth, support Paul and the ministry of the whole church at that time. We would ask that that person would please rise here today. (laughs) And I don't doubt that there's somebody that could. In the church there, there were uh, Jews and there were Gentiles. The Jews were individuals who who were leaders of the church in their previous life who had decided to come over to Christianity. There were men and women, married and unmarried, widows and children, there were people that were going in all sorts of different directions. For Paul, the church being diverse in this respect was non-negotiable. Paul said that if we're going to say that all are welcomed, that means that no one can be refused entrance within the church at that time. Well, into this mix, as Paul is noticing that there's all sorts of difficulties that are happening, Paul's indicated that and realized that there has to be something that is able to bring this diverse church that's bickering and quarreling, not all the time, but much of the time, there's something that needs to be brought to their attention so that they could begin to live a better and a better way of living a new life among themselves. So at the end of chapter 12, Paul, after listening to all of the things that were happening and noting them, and before he goes on to chapter 14, where he continues to talk about other issues within the church, he says to them, let me show you a better way of getting along with one another. Let me show you a better way. If you are struggling with how to get along with each other or even yourself, if you are realizing that there's something going that's not quite right, he says, let me show you a better way. And when he says this, what he's introducing is the cream (laughs) in between our Oreo cookie. Because that cream has got to be there in order for that cookie to be what it was intended to be. And what is it? Paul shares with us very clearly. 
the better way in which to look at life is to look at it in the perspective as what God looks at us. God looks at us, pours out his love into us, and then asks us to be loving and caring for other people around us. Paul goes to say that within this chapter, there are many things that can happen, many things that are good, and for Paul, the term love is not a noun, but it is a verb. Love is not something like we tend to use it. And by the way, how many of you had 1 Corinthians 13 as a part of your wedding service? Yeah, and that was rightly so. But that type of use of that love is using it for a love that already existed. And it's powerful in that way. And it's proper to use it in that way. Paul's purpose of using love in this setting for that church, and I'm going to suggest for us today, Paul's use of that word now is that he wanted it to be a collection of intentional activities. He wanted it to be a call to action on the part of the church, not just fine words about something that already existed, but he wanted to bring into being something that was not yet happening. They were not yet uni in unity with one another. They were not yet fulfilling what God had intended for them. So when Paul shares this particular passage, this love owed to love is what we call it, when he shares this, he's not just patting us on the back and saying good, good things, but he's saying this is a call to a different way of living. This is a call that has action words entitled in it and a part of it that will change the future and will provide what you need in order for you to survive. Without it, Paul says, and he implies, without this thing that's in between 12 and 14, without this action, without this intentional reaching out in love toward one another, your plantings, your seeds put into the ground are not going to flourish. There's no way in which they can grow. And we've read to you now already, and you've read in the scripture, what, how Paul stated those words. I'd like to share with you the way that Eugene Peterson, in his translation, uh, translation of the New Testament, the message, how he shares these action words. This is the verb part of love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. For Paul, that action was critical for that church in the first century to learn how are they going to get along with each other and how are they going to live in harmony with one another. I get upset with myself when I fail to hear what God is saying concerning this type of love. When I have opportunities in front of myself to extend love or to push myself forward and win, I get upset when I miss that mark, when I miss that way of doing it. I get upset when individuals who are on either side of an issue politically or in any other way, healthy individuals, 
when they find it impossible to come together to common ground and be able to talk civilly to each other about things that they hold near to their heart. I get upset with unjust wars. I get upset with road rage. And remember, I started this by saying what upsets things within me. I get upset with road rage. I get upset with shootings, when things happen, when individuals are caught in crossfires, and you can listen, we obviously had this happen close to us this past week, but you can listen to, I listened to the radio this morning, it was happening in the Chicago area several times over the night. I get upset with, with, a, with domestic family abuse. I get upset when I would choose not to use this cream inside of, <clears throat> of this Oreo cookie. I get upset within my own life when I fail to apply that particular way of being able to meet those that are near and dear to me. I get upset when individuals who, again, have very legitimate, healthy differences of opinion cannot find a way to the table to be able to visit and to talk civilly with one another. Now, if you agree with me in any of these situations, our tendency could be, well, <laughs> there's very little that I can do. And here's where Paul jumps up into our life and says, let me show you a better way. Let me show you a way in which this can happen. And then he shares very clearly that love is the action word. Love is not just a Valentine type of, a, of experience or, or sentiment that is out there someplace and makes you look good for one day, but it's an action word that comes into us and changes us from the inside out. This is what will allow the, the plantings, the seeds that went into that dark ground and are buried. It is love that is going to be able to open up the ground and allow them to grow and to flourish. Paul says there is a better way. There is a better way for you, for me, in all of the aspects of our life where we can take God's love that he has shared with us. We can take that into ourselves and then not bury it there, but let it flow through us to the people that are nearest and dearest to us. This love is a call to action. It's a call to action between spouses. It's a call to action between individuals and significant others. It's a call to action between parents and children, between children and parents, with grandparents, with friends, with church members, with whomever we come into contact with. Paul is saying there's something you got to be doing if you want to survive there is something that needs to be happening, and you know what? You have the power to do it. The Oreo cookie is not what it can be without the cream in the middle. You and I cannot be what we were intended to be without that love in the middle. So Paul says, so faith Hope and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is. Amen. Our song of the day might be new to you. The tune may be familiar. The words are a musical setting of 1 Corinthians 13. So the words should be familiar to our ears. I invite you to rise as you're able as we join in singing. Although I speak with angel's tongue.
together in trust and hope, let us now confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll gather our hearts and minds for time of prayer according to our prayer requests. For whom and for what shall we pray together today? Yeah, Carol. Let's pray for Carol's brother suffering from cancer and all those living with cancer. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life and health. and We pray for all those who are living with cancer, especially and including Carol's brother. We pray, God, you'd continue to advance cancer research and treatment. God, we pray that you'd give us hope for each day and, and to live strong and full of love each day that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, Deb. Let's pray for the Mount Horeb community. Almighty God, we lift up our neighbors just up the road in Mount Horeb and the aftermath of a, a very tragic uh, event at their school and, and gun violence. Uh, God, we pray for your healing and your help to come to that community. Uh, God, we pray that they would have a renewed sense of hope, uh, God, and that you would help them take gentle steps into the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Let's pray for those who are homeless. Gracious God, we thank you for the many gifts in our lives that we have, including uh, love and clean water, and safe homes. God, we pray for those who are without. Uh, we pray for those who are homeless. We pray, God, that they would find adequate shelter and that they would know their, their home in you, God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And one more. Let's give thanks for volunteers. Gracious God, we thank you for all the ways that we can show and express love and a sense of community, including with our volunteer actions. God, we thank you for all those who step up in various ways, whether it's um, uh, helping make school events happen or uh, Special Olympics happen or um, help uh, your church to thrive. God, we thank you for volunteers and we ask God that you'd help each of us find our way to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we'll finish with our prayer commitments. Merciful God, we ask you for healing in body, mind, and soul in whatever ways you know that we need. We especially lift up to you these friends of our church, 
Brayden, Barb, Jody, Tom, Mike, Sarah, Lori, Mark, Vicki, Neil, Jim, Vicki, and Elsie. Help us to care for one another with compassion and open hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now in silence for those who do not know your love. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time for the children's message. My young friends, come on up. If you've got a noisy offering, you can bring that too. For neighbors around the world to have things like soap. Good morning. Glad to see you. We're going to gather a little bit over this way because I've got a few things that we need today. Good morning. Glad you're here. Come on up. Good. It's good to be together today. All right. Some more noisy offering. Good job. And they're still coming. That's great. Well, friends, I've got a few things with us today here. And this is, what is this? It's a glass, right? It's a glass. So we're, let's pretend that this represents us, all right? We've got that this is a person. This is maybe you or me, and it's a glass. And then I've got um, a big pitcher of water. You're correct. It is just water, absolutely. And we're going to let this, we're going to think of this as God, that God is full um, all the way up, that God is full of love. We're going to let that water think about that as love, because love is kind of our key word for today, love, right? We've been talking all about how love is patient and kind. Well, what God does is God fills us up with love. As we pray to God and serve God and worship God, we get filled up with love. Actually, that's what God is doing all day long, every day, is just filling us with love. God wants us to feel full and, and, and have lots of love in our lives. And that it's a, lo it's a lot of love, isn't it? And God has a lot of love for us. And when, we, and when God just keeps filling us with love, then what happens when we are filled with love? Then we spill love everywhere, right? And it's just like a love mess, right? And we just keep getting filled up with God. And then look at this. We're still full of love. We don't have to get poured out. We don't have to get empty with love because God just keeps filling us. And God keeps filling us and filling us. And then we, and then we fill others with love. And the love just spills all over and splashes all over. I didn't foresee you guys trying to get water on your hands. I did not see that coming. Yeah. But this is how we can live our lives. It's just keep getting filled up with God's love. And then... The love just grows and grows and grows all around us. Isn't that pretty great? Well, my friends, I want you to know that God loves you so, so much and is filling you every day with love. And that, so there's so much love that we can share it with everybody. All right, how about we share the peace of the Lord? Let's stand up and face out to our family and friends. Put your arms out wide. Say it with me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to rise as you're able and share God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Jeff. I love you. We invite you to give an offering to God's mission through the life of this congregation. You can do that online by mail, the drop box on the front porch, and the offering boxes 
are at the entrances to the sanctuary. Our photo of the week is from our center stage sheer, sheer, uh, showcase, our showcase um, featuring Broadway and jazz tunes. It was a really great time. We had about 100 people here and 14 different acts and had a lot of fun, a celebration of music, praising God with our gifts. And, and it's just great to have a church that has fun together, that enjoys being together and having a good time together. If you missed it, I promise we'll have fun again together, uh, coming right up all the time. And so we praise God for the joy and the uh, gifts of this community. We'll praise God from whom all blessings flow with song. I invite you to rise as you're able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Creator, Son, and Holy Ghost. In thanksgiving for the gift of our lives, our offering shared in the meal we are about to receive, let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. And as you eat it, Remember me, this is my body broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, Remember me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread. For we see the life you gave and the blood you shed. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body. You shed your blood, and we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your blood. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is set. Christ is the host. Come as you are. Please be seated.
glory, hallelujah. City of God, he set forever. Golden Jerusalem, Jesus the Lamb. River of life, saints and archangels, sing with creation, O God, that I is risen and we shall arise give God the glory I invite you to rise as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthens you and keeps you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with, with this, this bread, bread of life and cup, cup of salvation, salvation you, have you have united us with Christ, making us one, one with your, your people. people. Now, now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is our spring community service day, and so uh, whether or not you're able to serve today, let's bless our hands for service to Christ and in the world and invite you to extend the palms of your hands for blessing. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God is at work. God is working through us, in us, and by our hands. Jesus sets us free from sin and death so that we may joyfully serve our neighbors. Will you look to Jesus as our example in freely serving others with our hands in love, compassion, and humility? We will, and we ask God to help us. I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your neighbor's palms and say to them, may your hands do the work of Jesus. May your hands do the work of Jesus. May your hands do the work of Jesus. And then let us pray with our hands up and open. Almighty God, into your hands we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Receive us and lead us that we may follow your steps and do your work with our hands. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we sing of the faithfulness of God.
faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, no mercies I see. All I am needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to few highlights of announcements in our life together. It is God's Work, Our Hands uh, Sunday, so our, our Spring Community Service Day, lots of projects. We mostly have somebody doing each of the projects, but we could use some more people. We surely could. So if you can give us a couple hours this morning, we intend to be done by noon, go see Becca Polk at the ministry table, and she'll find you a place that you can serve today. There are places in the building, outside, in the community, uh, come join us. I'm going to be at Lake Leota Park and doing all sorts of things there. Special pop-up choirs next weekend, as well as a, a, a sending for um, Ashley Bowman as she goes on to internship for her seminary education, open table community meals on the 13th. Oh, and if you go out to serve, take photos, will you? We like to be able to tell the story through photos. So send us your pictures as well. I think that's all the announcements. The details are all in the blue epistle. Or like I said, go talk to Becca. She'll find a place for you to serve. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, no mercies I see. All I have need in thy hand hath provided.